All right, uh, welcome back to Big Talk from Small Libraries again. Um, at our two o'clock Central Time presentation, about halfway through our afternoon of sessions. Um, Honoring the past, moving into the future is our topic here, and Adrian Juarez is here from Park City, Utah. Hello, Adrian. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hey, good, uh, good afternoon. afternoon. Um, oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah, and um, Adrian, their library did some great renovation um, recently, and she's going to share with us their experiences with that. So go ahead and take it away. Thank you. Uh, well, hi to everyone out there. My name is Adrian Harris, and I'm the director of the Park City Library in Utah. I uh, formerly, for seven years, uh, had a look at Andy's campus. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, Adrian. Adrian, I'm going to have to interrupt. Yeah, it's really, really hard to hear. Is there a way you can either do a little closer to microphone headset or something? Um, or yeah, it's kind of muffled. Um, do you have the ability to? Because we might we want to switch things up here to call in on the phone instead to use the audio that way through a telephone. Sure. Because the headset is kind of, yeah, muffled and hard to hear you, unfortunately. Let me just see if I can make that work in Okay. Yep. Yep. We're here. I'm here. I do not, uh, I'm not sure how to, what's the call in? Sorry? How do I call in? I can try it that way. Um, yes, in the login, inform e the email that you received um, had a phone number for logging in. It had a, when you went to do, when you actually registered. Here, I'm going to. When you registered, it would send you a confirmation email, and that would have a phone number. Your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. You know the access code? Um, yes. Oh. Shown after no, no digits. Please re-enter your access code. Is it a pound or hash sign? And then in the audio section of your. The access but, code you entered is invalid. You enter. One five two four seven. Please enter your access code followed by the pound or hash sign. Pound one seven eight seven four seven. Okay. You enter. No digits. All right. Um. How about this? Um. Hold on a sec, Adrian. Um. I'm going to get you some, I'm going to get back to you um, behind the scenes and I think we might switch up our schedule a bit here so we can get you, get you, uh, get you the information to log in. Um, hold on just a second. Meg, are you on the line? Can we jump to you ahead of time, ahead of your schedule? I've unmuted you, Meg. Meg, are you there? I see that you're logged in for a lifelong learning session. Oh, she may have stepped away. Meg, are you there? Can you hear me now? I can, yes. Is it better? 
Yeah, it's still not, but I think we'd rather do it on the phone. Okay. All right, everyone. Um, we're going to take a short break, and I'm going to um, get with Adrian to see about getting her switched over to telephone. I apologize for this, so just um, hold on. for. Well, okay. Well, people are saying that was a little better. Go ahead and try again, Adrian. I mean, to try. talk. Uh, what do I do? Sorry? We're just trying to test your audio a little bit better. Okay. I'm just, uh, is, can you hear me now? Can you hear it, me now? It does feel, it does sound clearer. Yeah, let's hear. Hang on a sec. I'm going to give you back control to share your screen again, and let's see if we can do this. Yes, that's much clearer, whatever whatever you're doing. <laughs> but go ahead. Sorry? What, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, very good. All right, go ahead and try again. Yeah. All right. Are, are we on or? Mm -hmm. Yes, go right ahead. Okay. All right, let's try this again. Thanks for your patience, everyone, while we worked out the sound. Uh, once again, I am Adrienne Heracor, uh, Library Director for the Park City Library, which is in Utah. Um, I have been the Park City Library Director this summer. It will be three years. Prior to that, I was with Salt Lake City Public Library. And um, I also wanted to say hi to everyone from Kansas. I used to run the Utah SLIN program, the um, distance regional program. So, so hi to everybody from Kansas and also MCLA. Um, so I uh, wanted to share a little bit about a renovation we just went through. Uh, Park City, Utah is ranked as Outside Magazine's Best Active Town in 2013. So we are a mountain town. I've got a few quick facts about us. We have a population of 8,058, which is from the 2014 estimate. We are 32 miles southeast of downtown Salt Lake City, and that is up a beautiful canyon here. We have three major ski resorts, so that's our industry, really, is a lot of skiing. We've got Deer Valley Mountain Resort, Kansas Resort, and Park City Mountain Resort. And at times, our tourist population exceeds our permanent residents. So while we have 8,000 people who live here permanently, we can fill this town sometimes at moments with about 80,000 people. Our uh, population uh, is, is 25, almost 25 percent Hispanic Latino, which is important for our service model. Uh, we have a large service industry, and many of those folks uh, live here sometimes part of the year, and we provide service and we're expanding services to that population. Park City was based on a mining history, so silver, gold, and lead were discovered in the 1860s, and so we're really an old mining town. We also have the Sundance Film Festival, which is held here. It's the largest U.S. film festival. And in 2002, the Olympic Winter Games were held in Utah, and many of the events were held here in Park City. So the town is very proud of that. And what I wanted to talk about today, as I know many small libraries are in communities that are very proud of their history, uh, a way to when you move forward with a renovation or a building of a library, how do you honor the past while you move into the future? Our residents, um, as we just did our renovation, we're very concerned to preserve the history of what Park City stands for. So our library is in the historic high school. And this is a picture of the building. It's a beautiful old high school, 1927-28. Uh, and when we proposed the remodel, uh, which was completed last summer in June, we had uh, the architect, really, the community wanted to focus on this historic gem. And in doing so, he wrapped it with something that was aimed to highlight the historic ex uh, architecture, but also give us more space and create kind of a modern entrance. There was no clear entrance on this building as it was an old high school. So what you're seeing here is, an, is the architectural rendering of a proposed wraparound addition to the building, which is now in place. And while we did this project, which took a year, it actually, um, the whole interior was done in, in addition to the addition. We moved out of our building in entirety. We, we could not be here while we remodeled the building. And we moved into our central park where we have a miners' hospital. This is a building that holds, held less than half of our collection, 
but we were held there as a temporary location as they as they did our construction process. And this was a very nice co a connection to history. So as we move forward in time and put in a lot of beautiful new amenities into our building, we got to connect with this old building, which is just beautiful. And I had people come in and say, gosh, I'm in my 80s and I was born here. So they were very excited that we connected with that piece of history. And the library was housed in that building, actually, uh, from 82 uh, until 1993. And then we outgrew that building and we moved into the historic high school. And while we were out of that of our current building, we had nowhere really to put the books. So we got very creative. And I thought I'd show this fun picture because we literally, this is City Hall. We literally lined the walls at City Hall with books and bookshelves. And we put books um, in our old fire station. We, in our mornings when we had our pull list for the books people wanted, we ran around the city and grabbed books from all over. And people could actually we put a self-checkout machine right in City Hall. It was kind of a satellite location, which was fun. So the thing that our Park City residents told us was that while we were getting a beautiful new building, they wanted to be sure that we kept the elements that they'd worked so hard on over the years and put them back into the building. And so I wanted to share some pictures of the things that they had done that were important to them to keep intact. This is a book spine. Um, Piece. It's made out of wood. These are these are all names of people who donated to the library, and these are our distinguished donors. This was managed by the Friends of the Library, and this piece was in the entryway in the old building, and folks wanted to make sure that that was put back into the new building. So we did get that back in, and I want to show you the other pieces that went back in as well. And these were pieces to make the folks happy in this new renovation. This is a community tile wall. And actually, this is hand-drawn. Um, the community did this in 1982. And these are the names of people who donated and created this tile wall. We had a challenge getting this back into the building because the tile wall was probably 10 feet by 10 feet in the old building. It had to be removed, and it was plastered to the wall. It was damaged, and so we could not get it back into the new building. We had a local photographer named Mark Maviar take this photograph, and we have framed that now. And you can see every detail. He did a beautiful job. It's a large photography piece that honored everyone who had their names on this as we moved back into the new building. This is a commemorative piece when we had the Olympics here in Park City. This is a manhole cover that was designed to show the Winter Games in 2002 and people want to see this when they come in. They remember every piece that's ever been in the building, and they look for them. We also have the Olympic Winter Games plaque, um, and this is on the building. When people came here for the Olympics, the library building in the high school was a feature, and there was actually a, a snow maze outside. We have a green field outside of our library. They made a snow maze there. And um, the King and Queen of Norway were hosted here as well. So people were very proud of that and wanted to make sure that went back in. This is a piece that went back into our building which honors the history of the high school itself. So our newspaper is called the Park Record. They took some old clippings. They took photos of the old football team, the basketball team, uh, some, some mining photographs, and the marching band. And we put that into a gallery area in the new building as well. People have enjoyed There's a class ring and a class pin here from the high school. People have enjoyed seeing that. And the story of the high school team is that the field outside where we now had that, where we had that fun snow race, that the field was angled down and that Park City would only run the ball down the field <laughs> to make their touchdown. <laughs> I don't know if that's true or not, but <laughs> I think it's a funny story. And then outside we have a uh, reading garden. So these are hand prints of people in our community, the McReynolds family, 
family. Those all had to be pulled up and then relayed uh, because the whole landscape changed uh, around the building as well as inside. And we wanted to preserve that. Everyone looked for their tile as soon as we reopened. We also have in our, uh, this is a little harder to see, but I wanted to try and show you. This is a donation by Virginia and Ben Valor here. So at one point in the community when they were developing this reading garden out front, people were able to sponsor benches. And we put those into storage during the project and brought those all back out as well. And then things like our Rotary, our local Rotary Club uh, has always honored citizens with awards once a year. And we put those plaques up in the library so that it brings people in, it reminds them of who we are, and it honors our citizens. And so those are back up as well. And as we underwent renovation, the biggest thing I heard was people saying, well, why are we doing this? We love our old library. Why do we need new amenities? Um, we have enough books. We have enough computers. Um, the building's fine just as it is. And so we spent a lot of time talking on the radio, in, in the newspaper, about the why behind the project. And as we reopened, we created some of these displays that really talk about uh, how we cherish and preserve the history, but also moves into the future in terms of energy sustainability and some things that really need to, ha need to happen in the building, like seismic cold stability. And I, the next, these are some of the pieces we put up to help the public understand um, the need for the remodel. And I'll, the next few slides are kind of little snippets that you can see that talk about that. So, so this is just from one of those posters, a little piece of it. You know, talking about the renovation, preserving our historic gym, um, like I said, we weren't up to seismic code and uh, earthquakes are a reality in Utah. Uh, we needed to improve our water and energy efficiency. And we did it to comply with the request we had from the community for gathering more community site. And we actually did some surveys to ask what they wanted. And this is what they told us. The other thing was sustainability. So this is a close-up of one of those posters as well. And you can see this is the old gym in the old high school here. This is just a lovely shot. There's the backboard for the basketball. 1949, and then this is a, just a sneak peek. I'm going to show you around the library with some modern day pictures of after the renovation, but there's a sneak peek of what it turned out like in 2016. But it was very important that we make this a sustainable building. Um, that reflected kind of the mining center history and also our green initiatives because Park City is a very green community. And we also wanted to, so here's the renovation project. There was no inch of this building that was untouched on the inside or the outside. They took down an old, right here, I don't know if you can see it, an old piece of the historic building that had been added in 93 because it tried to match the facade and that did not allow us to be on the historic register. So they removed that and they actually revealed the old building and then they highlighted it with the new part. And now we are on the National Historic Register. That just happened and we'll be celebrating with a bronze plaque in May. And so we're very proud to, to actually enhance what was already there. And I think that helped we say, oh, that's right, we had covered up part of this building in 93, and now we can see it again. And it's just beautiful with these cornices at the top that we're hidden. And I also thought I would now show you some of the pictures of the interior of the building to see why the community um, really wanted to talk this through, because the interior is now quite modern. So this is what it looked like during the transformation. We have 54,000 square feet in this building. Before we started the remodel, only 17,000 was really usable for the library itself. We were housed in here, but we weren't fully utilizing the space. So the entire interior was demoed. And what happened there is it allowed us to expose some really beautiful historic building elements that were covered up with plaster. These are beams. These are 
under, uh, we have a 350-seat auditorium on our third floor in the high school, and these beams hold that up. Those are gorgeous, and we were able to leave those as exposed, and also to expose this old historic brick inside the building, which is just gives it this nice feel. These are all of our study rooms uh, in the finished building. We have study rooms that have a high, high usage. And then also light. We were able to bring in light from the outside. Before the remodel, we still had classrooms that were off of the library that you couldn't get to from the inside of the library. So now the library has one large interior with light coming in as the classroom walls were taken down. And that has been a wonderful amenity. And this is looking outside. This was the winter months of our construction. But you can see that the old historic building is here, and they're starting to wrap it with that new modern feel with lots of light coming in. And I can now show you what they did on the interior. So this is the new library inside at Park City. And when you come in, we now have a coffee shop. So that was a very modern amenity. And people have been thrilled by that. One way that we preserve history and gave a nod to local culture is this art piece that's on the wall in the coffee shop in entryway. And this is a piece by Daniel Wyckoff, which celebrates our mountains and our, and our seasons. So this piece, these you can't see it in the picture, and um, I wish you could, but all of these lines are, are literally the handwriting of people in our community our community that wrote their stories on paper and gave it to the artist, and she worked the stories into this beautiful art piece of our mountain. And she designed the piece to be the summer, fall, winter, and spring transformation as you see the colors change over the piece. And then these hanging discs are for our silver mining history. These are silver discs that uh, hang and float over it. So that was one way we really worked in a bit of community into this space, which you can see is quite modern. This is the addition in the building, the wraparound. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you walk into our new information area, and we work very hard to make it very light and open and selective to get around. We do have self-checkout there, and lots of display tables everywhere, and power walls. So we're very tight to we'll open up and make the information desk very accessible for seeing when you come in. And I'm going to show you around this first floor area first, and then uh, we'll do a quick look at the second floor. This is the children's area. When you walk in, um, that's the first thing. You find a very active, vibrant children's area. And that's been the case. It's been very well used. And one of the highlights that we really liked were these bins. Uh, we were able to get all of our picture book collections into space house drawers. I don't know if anyone has used these, but they're lovely. You can put the covers out for the kids. Of course, these are mostly free readers at this level, and they can flip and look through those beautiful covers and make their collections. Our circulations have just skyrocketed because the kids are having such a fun time, time going through those books and keeping what they want to read. And then this is a special feature we put in to make it this also a very park city building. This is called our Miners Mountain. And this is a fun, creative play space. So back, if you go into this little mountain, you go through the little doors, and you go up the ramp on the end. And inside, on the back of this mountain, we have a mag magnetic wall. So we've got alphabet magnets and little gear magnets, and they can go back in there. And they have stuffed animals and puppets that do their own interactive and this was a nod to, to Park City and the mountains and the history here. You can see the mountain actually lights up. Uh, it's in different colors, blues and purples and greens, and they've changed throughout the day, which is fun. And then we were able to install AWE uh, stations, so the learning stations, which has been fun. They brought in lots of nice, vibrant colors. And then uh, when you come off of the children's area, this was a piece that meant a lot to us to celebrate uh, kind of the history of Park City, but also the new uh, look and feel of the library. 
So this is our community vision wall. And what you see on this wall is a black and white image of aspen trees. So if you look at that like we were laying on the ground looking up into aspen trees, um, this black and white photograph, if you can see this detail, these are color images that are exactly the same as black and white photographs below. And each one of these small bits of color is a 4 by 4 inch tile that uh, you can buy, anyone can buy from San Diego, even businesses can buy those. And they're $150, you can put a name on it. You can honor a school teacher who taught you to read, you can give a memorial. And that is starting to fill in, this was on opening day, but we sold more tiles and this is beautifully starting to fill in the color and the names of all of our community members are going up on that wall, which is a nice number. And this, again, was a local, so this is Mark Sandiard, a local photographer, so that's a nice cherished piece of it. Now this is looking up that staircase. We got a grand staircase. So the, the collections in our library are on the first two floors, and that's what I'm going to show you today is the first two floors. And as you look down the stairs, you can see that this is actually a digital media lab. So we did go 21st century library. We've got uh, collaboration booths down there, IMAX, with lots of high-tech stuff on it. We have two 3D printers, and then we go further back in the area. We do have a green screen and a sound recording booth. So we're very fortunate, very, very fortunate, and we know that, that we have the resources to put those into this new building. So that's a very 21st century flair and kind of a, a nicely blended historic modern uh, renovation. Now we're going back down at the bottom of those stairs. We've got lots of display space, and we have an audio-visual area, so all of our books on CD are DVD. Um, we also put our graphic novels here. Um, so that is kind of in the center of the main floor. And then we did something a little bit interesting. First of all, we, we told the community that our main floor was going to be our very active space. And so we've got seating here for people to read, to watch their kids play, to do a little studying. But a lot of the quieter spaces are on our, on our second floor so that we could accommodate everyone's needs. And on this main floor, we broke out the youth and teen learning. And we're defining youth as the kids kind of moving into independent reading. And kind of thinking that they're not necessarily wanting to be over with the little ones in story time anymore and reading picture books, but they want their own area. This is uh, the youth area, and we got a chance to make it kind of fun and vibrant and youthful. This wall is actually skateboard decks that have been cut into strips and offset and then placed on the wall. And then this is the gaming station. So in both of our youth, uh, sorry, both our youth area and our community, we do have gaming. And the community has a place where kids could come and hang out and be safe and have uh, engaging activities after school. And this is definitely bringing them in right behind this area are the collections, but I'll flip over to the teen area, which is mirrored. They're both kind of on the other side of the library. And the teen area mirrors the youth area, so they have the same number of collections. They both have the same this is the area here. This wall for the teens is a snowboard deck, which is very hard for you as well. So we cut up snowboard decks for the older kids. And then the older kids on this side can look right into that digital media lab and see the 3D printers. And we are bringing in kids um, for the sound booth all the time. They're recording, they're filming, they're having a lot of fun. And then we'll go upstairs. So so we took a big leap here. Let's imagine that you kind of walk up that ground staircase. But this is a quiet reason. So we wanted to accommodate all members of our community. And we this is a room that's locked up with glass. We have our magazine being distributed here. There's a little outdoor reading back here. You can kind of see this is a beautiful sunny day in our city. But reading areas, quiet areas, people are filling their seats, studying constantly. And then our material housing for the food, this is by no means you know, completely innovative. A lot of people have these slip shelves for their 
magazines. So it was the first time we had them, and we're getting a lot of nice views. You know that all the covers are up on the out. And then this is our nonfiction collection. You can see the blooms in there. And here's a better, better view of our nonfiction collection. So this is that upper rail with the lighting here kind of in the center. All of the steady people here in our nonfiction area with the blooms right above. Behind these little cases, we have eight study rooms. And those are filled all the time. And then what you can't see is our third floor. I didn't uh, take any pictures of the auditorium, but we do have a 350 auditorium and a gathering, TV gathering room that people can reserve for events or conferences or um, community conversations. And that's been used quite a bit as well. And then I just wanted to talk a little bit about the renovation being more than just the building and how we have been communicating and programming with the community since the remodel. So one uh, of those Adrian? Can, yeah. Hey, before you go on to this, can I have a few questions, some questions that came in about the building itself? Yes, please. Okay. First, someone said, and I agree with this, uh, with him. He says, "I'm in love with this library. <laughs> it's <is> gorgeous. Oh. Yes, <laughs> I love Thank the you. colors and how bright and open it is. is so really nice. And also impressed with some of those earlier construction sites or construction pictures that apparently a lot of this was done during the winter. It was. It yeah. Was, it was. <laughs> <laughs> In all one year time. Yes. Um, some couple of questions about the the children's area where you had those um, the bins. Yeah. Um, first, yeah. Um, how are are they like anchored very well so they don't like fall if somebody's pulling? Like, how do they? I guess how they safe are. they look kind of. They look a little precarious, don't they? With those they do. pulled out. So they are anchored to the floor. They actually okay. drill down into the concrete, which is oh, what nice. I mean, that carpet, and they bolt it down right to the floor. And generally, this is just for the picture. We generally don't have all of the bins pulled out at once. Usually, right. these kids will go up to it and pull out one drawer at a time, or maybe one or two kids are browsing at a time. So mm -hmm. I think with just one or two drawers pulled out, it doesn't look quite as <laughs> yeah. Now, this is a very interesting, different way of displaying the children's books. Um, is there any sort of, someone wants to know if there's some sort of circulation data. Did this increase the usage of the books because of how they're displayed that way? Yeah. Our circulation has shot up. Our visits have shot up. Um, we had, um, before in our building, we had about 95,000 visitors a year. It looks like we're going to hit 140,000 plus wow. this first year of opening. Um, our circulations have done just about the same, you know, all, almost doubled really. Um, mm -hmm. So we've been very pleased. I think those space outs make a huge difference. We oh, yes. We put um, display tables everywhere in this library. And the staff is wonderful. They uh, they all take a turn. They do you know, rotations of two weeks. They get to pick their topics, and so books are flying out uh, the door. Now this is our first year, so whether those numbers will keep going forever and ever, I don't know. But right now we are having a lot of excitement. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, in the youth room, also there was. Um Oh wait. Okay. Actually, back to that picture. Someone just said, <laughs> "Is that a hamster cage behind that in the previous yeah. picture?" What is uh, that? Actually, guinea pig cage. Guinea pig. Okay, close. <laughs> just saw that peeking around the pillar there. <laughs> nice. And if we ever tried to get rid of the guinea pigs, that was a historic piece that also was back in that building. Um, the, the kids uh, would not have been happy. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> the, the guinea pig name is popcorn. Uh, oh, nice. Okay, popcorn, the guinea pig. Um, in the youth room, you had uh, d uh, d um, artwork on the wall. What would, did you say that was made up of? The the big display on. Is it this one? Uh, I'm not sure exactly one. What did you say is on the wall in the youth room? I think it might have been the one you said was. There's one that was um, snowboards. That might have been the one. Oh yeah. Yes. Let me go back to that. Those are skateboard decks. These that, skateboard. yes. What is that one? That's the one. Those are skateboard decks, and they were cut. They they cut off the ends of the skateboard. Skateboards, they, okay. They, of course, took off the wheels, and then they, they cut the decks into four strips. So you know how they're very colorful on the underside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
and then they offset each deck so that you can yeah. see. So, for example, let's see if I can pick out this is one deck, but see they split it. They split it right and left. Right. You can see the color kind of gather. The colors gathered together. Yes, that you can see how they could match up. Yeah. Right. So this is this purple here is all one sweet board, but it's all nice. deck. Okay, nice. And actually, talking about that other one that was the, the one that looked like the trees and has the full color tiles that eventually get, yeah. yeah. Is the idea that that one will eventually become full color because of people yes, choosing exactly. and to do that? Okay. So you will not see the black and white eventually. It will be the full color, and it's beautiful uh, fall colors. Mm -hmm. uh, the sky, you see the sky here in blue, and then these beautiful white aspens, um, the trunks, and then the, these are oranges and yellows in the leaves as that built in. Very cool. Very creative. All mm -hmm. right. And, and we did change our logo to an aspen leaf with a book at the bottom because as a mountain town, we have a lot of aspen mm -hmm. trees. Mm -hmm. And of course, the aspen grove is all connected at the roots. So all of these individual trees coming up through the ground that everybody connected at the roots. And so we really have gone to the Aspen um, mm -hmm. as our logo. Nice. OK, cool. I'll let you go ahead and continue then to, to, uh, with your presentation. Sure. Cool. I just want to get those in there while we were looking at those pictures of the building. Oh, sure. <laughs> That's great. So please so let me know if there are any others. Here's, uh, here's an example of the display table. And we, we chose nesting tables. Someone asked mm -hmm. okay, about I see. That. Yeah. And those are throughout the library on both levels as well. So let me go back. Really, those are the images of the building. And I was going to talk a little bit about this project being more than just the building. Um, so along with the other pieces that needed to come back in that were really reflective of our history is kind of the tradition of our Miss Katrina. We have a story to like our like our sweet little popcorn guinea pig. If Miss Katrina wasn't there every day when the kids walked in, it would have been a stark contrast to what they were used to. So we made sure that we really kept going with those programs that they were very fond of. And um, we've done a lot more publicity about, here's what you get in your new library, so come on in. Um, and then, of course, we're, we're adding. Because we have no amenities, and we've been able to expand on that. So this is the program, the dual language immersion film. So it's uh, nice for us that we have an auditorium where we can show movies, but we partnered with and the Summit County Library. This is our new Aspen Leaf logo. And we're doing French and uh, we alternate French, uh, French English films and Spanish English films uh, with subtitles. So French or Spanish with subtitles. And that's been popular. And then we really started to do a lot of technology training because in the new building, people are still getting used to this 21st century model of there are more computers here. There's a lot of technology that we can take advantage of. And we've had such great participation. And then the other thing we've been really working on is our service, particularly to our Spanish-speaking population here. Um, there is a community group. It's a Latino advocacy coalition. The people from the school district, our mayor sits on it, our city manager sits on it, I sit on it, and our rec departments is on it to try and create programs and services that are driven by people in the community who speak Spanish and who want to. So we've got a new partnership with the school district where we're doing um, ESL tutoring partnerships, and that was requested by this group. So we're very excited about that. And then programs like Little Bits, hopefully everybody knows what Little Bits are, these little electronic, kind of like little electronic Legos. The kids are having fun with that. And then we also did some publicity pieces to celebrate the history that went back in. So when our tile wall was reinstalled, we made some publicity about it so that people could see that, hey, if your name is on here, that those tiles actually didn't survive the construction, but here's a gorgeous um, photo piece of your name and the tile where you were placed in 1992. And then we're also teaching a lot of new te technology skills. So we do uh, library hacks. And we have some TV screens that are located on the walls, both on the first floor and second floor. And we're teaching things like download books and ebooks. Now, 
ebooks aren't new, but a lot of people, now that we have this new library, are coming in and showing a new interest. So how do they download their ebooks? So we're really doing a lot of teaching along with the rebuilding. Here's another library hack, which is fun. Take technology home with you. So we have a case in our digital media lab that has all kinds of new technology from GoPros, bamboo drawing tablets, video recording, and the items can be checked out. So we're teaching people how to check those items out. And then here's, um, this is Miss Katrina with our patron Jacob. They are playing Xbox and Wii at the library, which is a really new, fun thing. So they, the kids are flocking in, the kids and teens, and we really wanted a youth component in the library to disengage. And then the most important thing in any project, this is the wonderful staff of the Park City Library. Nothing could be done without them. They moved the library twice. They moved out of the old high school, which was the old library, into Miner's Hospital in City Park. They picked books up every morning from City Hall, from the old fire station, and they smiled throughout, and then they moved it all back. I mean, we literally had to calculate every centimeter of shelf space, and fortunately, it all fit back in. And um, they're doing great. We're learning as we go, the community's learning, but we're also celebrating our past and moving into the future. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful adventure. And does anyone have questions? Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, great. Thank you, Adrian. Um, now we got things going and sounding a little better. Um, yes, we do still have a few more questions. If you do have any other questions for um, Adrian for about Park City Library, type them into the um, questions section of your GoToWebinar interface if you hadn't been doing that already. Um, someone does want to know what um, is it the total square footage. I know you had the addition on. What was the before and then the after? We were utilizing about 17,000 square feet in the old library because there were classrooms that we couldn't access. Mm. And now we're utilizing 54,000 square feet. Mm, so wow. we opened up the entire interior of the building. Mm -hmm. That is a huge... And that does include the auditorium, by the way. So that is a big auditorium on the third floor, which you didn't see. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the size of your staff? Is this everybody, or is there more? <laughs> well, we didn't have everybody there that day. I've got 11.88 FTEs, and it's, okay. so that's about 18 people. Okay. Um, uh, someone wants to know the manufacturer of the shelves that you had made. Where did you get the shelving from? We use space savers. Space savers. Okay. Space savers. Uh huh. Cool. Um, and is there um, security cameras um, to monitor the areas? I was noticing it does look very open and lots of walls and things. Is there a security system, or how do you keep an eye on the whole place? Yes. That is important because we do have a small crew for such a large building and it's very open. Mm -hmm. We did this Park City, the city itself, has a very vigorous security program and um, we have a gentleman who works for the city and puts the plan into all of the public buildings. So we were fortunate that the city provided cameras and we do have them located, you know, kind of strategically throughout the building. And you know, very careful not to put them on collections or anything. But we do have mm -hmm. some security cameras. Okay, great. Um, you had mentioned being green. Do you uh, because of there's a lot of open space and I know there's a lot of windows. Um, was there any sort of special um, accommodations for energy saving measures put in um, because of that? There were, and it, that was a huge piece. So the project started out in. City Council had voted for the renovation, but as the planning process went forward, they realized that they wanted to green the building. So they mm -hmm. added money to the project generously, and the walls were insulated. They put in LED lights throughout the building, and they actually replaced the roof. We had a barrel roof that the way the snow, in the wintertime we get heavy snow, of course, at the ski town. Mm -hmm. But the way the old building was managed in terms of snow on the roof, it was not it would not bear enough weight to have snow on there and really they didn't insulate it so that the heat from the building would rise 
up and out and melt the snow. Hmm. So we got a new HVAC system. They put a new roof on, which actually um, holds in heat now. <laughs> and um, so we have met uh, lead silver standards. Hmm. Now, just a new roof alone can make a lot of difference. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned that they did the approval for the building. Someone wants to know, where did you get the funding for all the, the remodel? I'm not sure if that was mentioned before or not. Sure. We, used, we have an RDA fund that we were able to use. And the RDA fund is covering a number of uh, development projects within Princeton. The library was one of them. Oh, okay. We were fortunate to be able to be a part of that redevelopment agency money. Mm -hmm. Um, someone wants to know about programming. Um, a couple different questions. Um, how many team programs do you do, um, first of all? Can you repeat that? How many? How many teen programs? Teen programming? Teen programs. Events for the teens. Teen programs have been our weak spot historically. Oh. And we just got a position approved, fortunately, for someone to help us focus on Spanish services and teen services. Nice, okay. So we have programs that are, you know, we have some kind of past programs we're doing, the coloring, you know, coloring books, the new trend that everybody coloring. And we do some things that are kind of more for youth, like our Lego club. We have some craft mm -hmm. and programs. We've got some films and things. But as soon as this new person gets here, uh, we've made an um, an offer to someone. We we intend to up our team program. So okay. I will say um, we are having a Star Wars day coming up. And oh, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, that's fun. And we, uh, Miss Katrina is also into acting and has an improv group that has come and done improv with our team. That has been a lot of fun. All right. Um, now, also a related to programming, when you were at the, the in the miners hospital, when you were you know in between, how did you how did you run it there? How did that all? <laughs> oh my goodness! Is that a big? It was a <laughs> <laughs> well, really, we we didn't have any furniture, so we took bookcases from our old from the library, the old library in the historic high school, and we just pieced it together. Hmm. It ran fairly smoothly. Uh, you know, there are four floors in that old hospital, and we made a little children's area down in the basement, and we pieced together some old shelves and made a circulation desk. Hmm. We really just kind of built our own little library inside there, and, and had and had technology in this old building, you know. And had just improvised with what you had at the time. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remarkable. All right. Um, Question I had, I loved at the very beginning, you had the, the donations wall, the one that looked like books. Book oh, that was gorgeous. Where who um, where did you get that done? Was there a local company or how? Who, where did that? Yeah, it was a local craft person who built that. Oh, that's a, that was, I saw that. That's a wonderful that idea and it's just beautiful. Yeah. I'm going back right now. That's yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Sorry, it's taking me a second. It was very but, creative. I don't know that I've seen that. Um, I'm sure others obviously might have, but I had not seen it. I've seen things like the tiles and this and this and you know bricks and whatnot. Yes, that. Yeah, that. And so each one of those books finds as a name, and those are tre those are treasures. And then down here where the call number is, it's the year that the person donated as oh, well. Nice. And I see there's still some blank ones mixed in there, so you can add more as as time goes on. Yeah. <laughs> so those new on. That's true. Uh, um, the community naming wall. Um, uh, is it where who where who did that one? The one that's the that's the tree that one, right? Was, we worked with a sign company called Alice Heck Signs, which is a is a local sign company in Salt Lake, but you know about 30 miles from here. Mm -hmm. They designed the keys in cooperation with our architect and. Mm -hmm. Uh, we actually have to yeah. run those titles down to Salt Lake whenever we get a little batch and they print the names on them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so really, it's a lot of looking, um, I think a lot of people are asking these questions to see you know, if they could do the same thing. Look locally to see who you have in town or somewhere in town near you that might do this kind of thing to bring in that mm -hmm. kind of creati creativity into your building. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it supports local artisans too that have these amazing mm -hmm. ideas. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And just a final one, um, so I just wants to know, what's your annual budget? What budget are you working with there? Well, we were fortunate. Uh, we now are operating on about $1.2 million, which after the renovation, the city council did approve a budget increase to help us with operations and for now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And your population served just over a little over 8,000, according to what you had said, right? That's right. 8,058. Yeah, so yeah. So that's a small area, yeah. It is. I think it's a little bit... Um, we do give visitor cards as well, and I was mm. talking. To well, you do tourism, yes, right, yeah. Yeah, so if, it, you know, if, if we have eighty thousand people staying in hotels for a week, and somebody comes in for a book, <laughs> as <they laughs> well. So mm. the population fluctuates a lot with the tourism. Right, of course, yeah. Okay. Um, that's great. I think that will wrap it up for the for this session. Then thank you so much, Adrian. Sorry about the yeah the sound issues uh -huh. before. We did do tech tests with people. I'll, I'll tell you guys on who are watching. We did do, but you never know what happens. You know when we're when you're going live. <laughs> yeah, it's but it, and I've put my uh, website the website up here on the screen. If anybody has any questions or would like to contact me, my contact information is on that website, and I'd be more than happy to help anybody you is thinking of doing projects or would like to know anything more about the Park City Library. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. Yeah, there's a lot of good information. I think you give just about renovation in general, but the, the well, you said the title of your presentation, Honoring the Past, keeping all of that, um, carrying that over into the new building really, I think, makes a difference to, to how it looks and feels and to the community. And I think that's, did a great job of that, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Thank okay. you. It's been a pleasure. We're having a, a really good time in the new library. <laughs> I'm glad. All right. Thank you, Adrian. Um, that'll wrap it up for this session.